Hey there, it's Doodle Bud. Uh, thanks for coming by. Hey, off the top, I appreciate the comments. I mean, uh, not that there's many of them, but I appreciate the comments I do get. Um, and also, too, if you have questions, throw them in the comments. I try my best to get back to you in any which way I can. Anyways, you uh, obviously searched for a Visconti homian, Homo sapiens. And this is the Bronze Age. Because at some point, you saw this thing and thought, I like the looks of that. I think I want to get one. And so I did too. And here's mine. I looked around at it, you know, quite a few times, caught my eye. Thought it's pretty cool. I ended up getting one off the Fountain Pen Network uh, classified section. It seemed like it was all right. Came from Ireland, got the pen. Obviously cheaper than new. Uh, he said it had a little bit of a baby, baby's bottom problem. It had a mega baby's bottom problem. <laughs> I was a little ticked. Uh, but smooth, you know, worked the, the nib a little bit. I am not a nib meister, nib grinder. Actually, this is one nib I probably will get sent off. You'll see why. Um, but now it writes, and uh, it's crazy wet. This is a fine. You can see the, well, if I can zoom or focus. Anyways, there's an F down there. There you go. That's the fine. The nib is, it's one of those nibs that's really pretty. So like your, your Pelican... M805, or if you got one, and M1000 nibs are very, very pretty. Of course, the Mont Blancs are pretty and really cool looking. This Visconti, too, that anytime the two, the nibs are like a two tone, they look really nice. So, uh, yeah, nice looking nib, sharp looking pen. This is the lava resin. Um, the cap mechanism is really cool. It's got that, they call it the bayonet capture. So there's five different starting points. So, you know, five different ways to cap it. It's a real quick, like, sixteenth of a turn to cap it. How it works, there's a bit of a spring action to it. And uh, let me see if I can find something. Maybe this will work. But it goes in and it pushes that inner cap. It's on a spring. So it catches it. And you can see it's got that spring action on there. This is a really old ratty pencil. <laughs> um, so that's how it works. So the spring action, um, you see on the edge here, it's got to push down, go into it, and then the notch goes back up because then when you release the pressure, the spring pulls back up to kind of lock the cap in. So that's essentially how that system works. It's just a little nub. And you can see there's five of them. This one's second hand, so they're worn down a little bit. This person had it for a few years, so it, can still, it still works great. So that's super unique about it. Obviously, the styling's super unique about it. Nothing else looks like this. I find the, the black with the bronze is really sharp. I haven't used this one in a little while. So this is sort of, I rubbed it a bit with my finger to polish it. But you can get that darker kind of tarnish oxidization color. You can shine it up and buff it if you like to keep it shiny as well. Um, here, actually, I got a little jeweler's cloth that I use for rings. You can use it on here too. You gotta be a little bit careful. You might take off some of the paint, but you can see the before. We'll just give it a quick little rub. Hopefully the camera isn't shaking too much. So if you wanna make it real shiny, you can see the difference. You know, have that vintage type of look or super shiny. Whatever you wanna do, that's kind of a cool feature about the pen. There's not many pens you get to do that with. Um, so that's sort of a bonus it's got. You've seen that. You can get the magnet, pop it off, put a custom one in. I don't know who really does that, but if you want to do it, do it. I think the stock Visconti one looks nice. Um, the nib uh, does screw and screw up. This is the Palladium. Uh, one little comment with that is mine. I don't know, maybe it's just mine, but it gets stuck a lot. I, I, I uh, Before I, I did this, I thought, let me see how stuck it is, this video. And I thought, okay, maybe if I can crack it, then I can show you that feature, but I, I was pressing, like I had a little gripper, um, like a drawer liner on here to grip it, and, and I, I wasn't comfortable applying any more force than I did. So I've had that happen several times, and then all of a sudden one time when I, well, when I clean it, I'll try it again and it comes off, fairly simple, so I don't know what it is. Maybe the threads lock a little bit. Um, I don't know if you've experienced that with yours, but just so you know, that's something that can happen.
This is the vacuum filler. I know that they have the new version out that's got the ink window. And you have the pen, you think, oh, it would be nice if I could see the ink level. And then they make the pen that does that, which is exactly what people have been requesting. Then I see it, and I'm like, I don't think it looks that great <laughs> compared to the original. But anyways, that's my opinion anyways, which doesn't really mean much. But um, just like my uh, Custom 823 that I, re that I reviewed, put it in, drop the plunger, away you go. So the only thing that's a little different, as you probably read on, is um, this material does absorb water, uh, any type of liquid. So obviously when you put the ink in, you know, this one's used. So if you want to have an idea, you probably can't see too much. Um, I don't know if the lighting's going to get it, but there is a little bit of discoloration on here. So that it does happen. It's not like it's catastrophic. Like if it's a white pen and you stain it, that's really stained. It, it does blend in. So there is a little bit of coloration from different inks, but you don't really notice it too much. As far as cleaning it, um, lots of things. I've put it in an ultrasonic chamber. Um, also, too, I've done, I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not, but I've done a little bit of baking soda with a touch of lemon juice and some water and a toothbrush, and it kind of cleans out all the pores, makes it look brand new, almost gets a bit of a grayish, ashy color. And then over time, just as it absorbs moisture or oils from your hand, it, it does get a little bit darker, and a little bit slicker. Um, you can't, there's, there are like white speckles when it's super clean. You don't really see them as time goes on. And, you know, if you're the OCD person, um, it's an imperfect finish. You can see there's little pits and pores on it. So if you don't, if that would drive you nuts, then don't get the pen. Maybe get a different finish. But I like that feature. Again, it's so different than any other pen. I mean, my Daily Writer, my favorite pen that I use all the time, you know, you like polish it, keep it all shiny and glossy. You know, my Diplomat, if I, if I scratch the anodized, I'd be so upset. Um, with this pen, you know, you don't notice those little imperfections because it's full of imperfections. So that's when, one really kind of cool thing about the pen. It posts, um, not overly deep, just to kind of cover the cap. Um, and it is, you know way too long i mean i gotta zoom out probably way too long posted i i would find and, and that cap is super super heavy in the back so I, n I never write with this one posted i write with a lot of pens posted but this one again is, is large enough uh, to not require it since i just had the pen out let's just compare it say to what the 149 as far as length they're reasonably close let me this way here you know, overall length. I don't know if you can, pens just roll like crazy. So if you're comfortable with the 149 length, it's pretty darn close to it. Obviously the 149 has a bigger nib. Um, but as far as size wise, the 149 is a little bit thicker, especially in the grip section. But, uh, so it's a good size pen. They do make a smaller version. This is a larger version. Anyways, I, eight minutes in, good gosh, I've just been chatting. So let's ink it up and go over it and I'll uh, a lot of people in my Lamy 2000 video are super thankful I did a comparison of different line widths so I'm going to try to remember to do that on my videos just to give an idea but I might forget so <laughs> it is what it is these are spontaneous unrehearsed non-scripted videos I try to do in one shoot so you get what you get uh, pull it out pop it in there you do got to let it sit for about 10 seconds I didn't know that originally. Um, I found this thing wasn't getting much ink capacity in it. I was a little bit frustrated. Um, since we got it, let's do a little close up. It looks nice when you ink it. Really pretty. Um, but then I was in uh, Victoria, Vancouver Island, Victoria, BC, and there's a pen store there called Simply the Best. Good guy that runs it. He's got a lot of, a lot of stuff in there. It's a little cluttery, but he's got lots of good stuff in there. He knows his Visconti's very well, and he mentioned to me, no, no, you don't just pop it in and pull it out. Um, once you ink it, you got to let it sit in there for 10 seconds, and it'll fill properly. And, uh, yeah, hey, thanks for the tip. That that works. So, unlike the Ink 23, you depress the plunger, creates the vacuum, the ink fills the whole pen right away. You could, you could see it, too. You can't see it on this, right? Um, but uh, on this one, he said, just hold it for a 10 count, and away you go. So... Um, you know, everyone freaks out about how quick you have to take it out immediately and clean it. Whoops, let's screw that up. Um, 10 seconds isn't going to like all of a sudden rant, you know, just per permanent stains on the pen. 
Um, so I just wipe it off. Sometimes I'll lick my thumb like I did there, give it a quick wipe, and then just get the rest of the ink off just to really thoroughly clean it. But other than that, you ink it, you know, it's not... I was worried about ink staining on here, and I, it's really not that, that, that much of a concern. So this is the, uh, we'll do a writing sample here. Just if I can get the page in a little bit closer. Visconti. Is it two Ps? I think so. <laughs> I should have. It says right on here. Nope, one P. <laughs> Fantastic writing sample. And this is the uh, Bronze Age. And in case you can't tell already, this thing is mega, mega wet. This nib width, which is kind of laughable, um, is a fine. Just completed the loop. Let's try that again. Uh, I can't even write. Oh my gosh. Fine. Like, it's a super gusher. That's one of the reasons I don't use it a whole bunch because it's it's just like too wet. It is crazy. You know, it's mega, mega wet. So, and especially for a fine. Um, this is quite, if you put zero, zero pressure, I guess you could maybe say it's a fine, um, but anything other than that, because it is bouncy and flexy, which is nice, it's quite thick and heavy, and then, this is when I, I might actually get the scent off to get it adjusted. I've tried reducing the flow, just uh, getting the tines a little bit tighter, but this thing is just so wet all the time. Um, this stuff is still probably, yeah. <laughs> after all that so a little too juicy for my likings um let's just do a couple nib widths just to compare and then we'll take it from there so uh homo sapien fine i'll show you a little bit of the bounce it has so this is one where i might see about getting it done to like an extra fine um because you get enough little bounce with it it's not a flex pen but it's got some nice bounce that it'd probably be really really nice if it was a you know fairly fine point and then had that nice bounce to it um so this is a parker 51 this is a special let's put s so you can see quite the difference when it comes to what we say as a fine nib. Uh, another one I got a, a common pen. I just inked up because I just did the review last week. And like I said there too, it's got a lot of nib creep. I haven't touched the pen since I've used it. <laughs> it comes out quite wet like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's, you know, maybe some extra ink in the, in the cap there. But anyways, this is a fine. Okay. And then, um, I guess, I don't know, this is my diplomat, but this is extra fine. Um, so yeah, I can see the difference. Like it's, it's a pretty heavy duty fine nib pen. I would say this is for sure a medium. Um, and then you do get nice line variation. Again, maybe mine might be a little bit heavier just because I had to remove significant baby's bottom. Um, but it is a very smooth nib, pleasure to write with. For me, just too wet, like look what it does. <laughs> it's, I wonder, you know, Okay, yeah, it's still a little bit. That dot there was still a bit juicy after all that time of time lapse of waiting it for it to dry. Um, but anyways, I mean, it's a really great pen. I love it. I wish it wasn't quite as wet. Um, so I'm going to see if getting some nib work done can get that fixed. Because um, I'd love to use it more. 
but you know if you're doing notes and you're writing and you go flip the page it's you could smudge all your notes so that's my only gripe with it which it's a pretty significant gripe i mean <laughs> the one not one thing you want a pen to do is write the way you want it to write and so for me this is probably a bit too wet i think for most people it probably is um i don't know how the newer ones are i know they switched to gold for their newer models um or if maybe mine's a bit rare that it's just this wet if you have a, another experience feel free to you know leave a comment or whatever but anyways i think that's about enough oh boy 15 and a half minutes so yeah we're done appreciate you coming by subscribe and like and all that good stuff if you can have a good one one other thing i uh wanted to mention as well is i, I briefly just showed you the capping mechanism um spring loaded there one thing to be to note is when you go to cap the pen it is pretty easy if you go in not dead center but off to the side of it your nib will hit that little edge you know it, it will go in but if you if you're not going straight in at an angle you know if you're going a bit of an angle there is potential to well you know, hit that maybe even potentially damage the nib so this is one of those pens where it's just um if you pass to someone who's not super familiar with fountain pens and sometimes they're a little aggressive and they're just used to slamming on pen caps and boom boom um if they miss whack they can get it into that lip there that ridge and they could mess that nib up pretty bad so uh, just be a little careful if you pass it around you know to the wrong person if they just go to slam it in they could hit it and they could really damage that nib so one thing to keep uh, keep in mind when you're handling the pen as well.